Fractions come up so often in mathematics, it should be, uh, you know, entire books just uh, related to just this, what to actually do. And what do I mean by a fraction here? I mean something like, um, let's say, you know, 2 over 3, some sort of, you know, ratio, some sort of something divided by something else. So in this case, uh, I want to show you a few different tricks uh, or things to keep in mind when you're actually working with fractions. So the very first thing is uh, always reduce fractions. Maybe I'll write that in red like this. So always reduce fractions. That's the first sort of important step, I think, at least in my opinion. So what do I mean by that? I mean, uh, let's say we got something like 5 divided by 10. You can actually reduce this fraction because both of these numbers can actually be divided by the same number. Turns out 5 can be divided by 5. You'll get, if you divide them both by 5, you get 1. And 10 also divides by 5, you get 2. So you could say that this fraction, 5 over 10, reduces to 1 over 2. Now if you use your calculator, I'll just bring one in here. Uh, if you use your calculator, the TI-83, which is a very commonly used one, or even the TI-84, which is a Texas Instruments uh, calculator, it has a nice little function that allows you to be very lazy. So let's just say I put in uh, 5 divided by 10. It automatically wants to give me the decimal. But if I ever want to convert that to a fraction, just to see, it'll also convert it to a reduced fraction. I just press math, and then I want to convert it to a fraction, so I press enter, and then I want to actually do it, so I press enter. A lot of my students, uh, I teach them to just, you know, whenever they have a fraction, if they're really not sure what to do and they're really lazy, just do math, enter, enter. That's really what it does. See, if I do 5 divided by 10, without even reading what I do, I just have to do math, enter, enter, and then I get 1 half. Now, of course, that's the extremely lazy way. Of course, you can do this by hand. So most of the examples I use, I always do it by hand. It's a good uh, practice, and it's good to be able to do this stuff on your own. Now, there is a little issue, though, here with should we look at mixed fractions or improper fractions? What I mean is, uh, sometimes your number on the top, which is the numerator, is bigger than your denominator. So the question is, what do you do with that? It all depends on what your teachers uh, prefer or what they prefer in the curriculum that you're taking. So, uh, for example, a mixed fraction, that could be something like, um, I'll do an example, like one and two fifths, for example. That's a mixed fraction. See, it has a whole number one, and you have to do two out of five. So in other words, you're doing one plus two fifths. Now, if you want to make this same thing here an improper fraction, uh, what that is is, well, you, you know, you have one whole thing, and you have two fifths. So if I want to try to look at this, I want to get everything into fifths, so to speak. Uh, so that means I do one times five, which is five, and I add that to two, so I get actually seven fifths. So it all depends on which way your teachers prefer. I much prefer improper fractions. I much rather just leave it like this. Okay, so you can see that uh, you can easily do that. Again, just to prove to you that it always works, or you can always do it on your calculator. One plus, I want to put in parentheses, two fifths. It's important to always be explicit with what you want your calculator to do. Don't let it guess with when to do what. You tell it really what you want it to do. That's 1.4. What if I want to convert that to a fraction. I press math, enter, enter. And see, I get 7 fifths. So 1 and 2 fifths is obviously the same as 7 fifths. Great. It's not exactly that exciting. Now what should we do about, uh, so I wanted to talk about reducing fractions, which we just did. I also want to mention something very important about um, adding or subtracting fractions. So that's another important thing to do. And the key thing here is, so for adding and subtracting fractions, what should we actually do? It's really important to find common denominator. This is the important thing. So what I mean by that is the denominator is the bottom number. Okay, so it's really important to be able to find, uh, make them common so that you can compare them. So what I mean by that, let's uh, maybe I'll do an example here. So let's say I do something like, uh, let's say two thirds plus 
one half. So what would that be? Well, I can't really compare them right now because they don't have a common denominator. It's like comparing apples and oranges. I have to get them on the same thing, so to speak. So there's one easy trick. I mean, I, I need to look at and make the bottom number the same for both of them. A nice easy trick is to look at what number uh, do both of these go into, so to speak. In other words, I can multiply 3 by something and get this number, and I can multiply 2 by some other number and get the same thing. So in this case, uh, a nice easy trick I like to use, you can always be okay with this by doing 3 times 2. So whatever this bottom number is here, multiply that by the other bottom number, and that is for sure going to work. Sometimes there's ones that are even better than that, you know, that are less big, but this is a nice easy trick. So 3 times 2, that's 6. So I know for sure I can get them both over 6. What I'm going to do now then is try to get them both divided by 6. So 3 times what gives me 6? An easy trick is to remember, you know, I want to take this fraction, 2 thirds, I want to make it something over 6. So what I can do is multiply 3 by something to get 6. So 3 times what gives me 6? 2. So that means I have to multiply the top by 2. I'm going a little bit faster here, I'm just trying to show you here what I do. So I do 3 times 2 to get 6, so that means I have to do 2 times 2 to get 6. That gives me 4. And then what did I have to multiply 2 by to get 6? Well, 2 has to be multiplied by 3, so that means I have to multiply the top also by 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. I hope that makes some sense. It uh, really helps to do a little bit of practice with these different things. I'm just going to clean this up so it's back to looking the way it should have. Oops, I guess I sort of messed it up here. So 2 over 3 plus, and it was 1 over 2. So 2 thirds plus 1 half is 4 sixths plus 3 sixths. Now the reason I do this, this might seem like just a lot of work, but see now since they're both over 6, then I can actually make them both over 6, so to speak. So 4 plus 3 over 6 is going to be the same thing. Since they have the same denominator, I can write down the top like this. And 4 plus 3 is 7. So this answer is 7 sixths. Sometimes it's a bit of a mouthful to actually say that, so sixths. So that's how we add or subtract fractions. It would have worked the same way if we were subtracting. Okay? We just have to get a common denominator, we get it over the same number, so to speak, and we can work on the top, and then after that we can just simply divide them.